Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm gonna be doing a sketch with me video because we haven't done one of those in a while and you guys really, really seem to enjoy those. So yeah, we just usually like sit down, do some drawing here in my sketchbook, have a chat, and I asked you guys for some questions the other day for me to answer and just any topics you'd want me to talk about. So I'm gonna be answering those today. Also, uh, don't forget to stay tuned till the end of the video because um, I'm gonna be announcing kind of a big giveaway. No real reason, but if you want to enter the giveaway, uh, just stay tuned till the end of the video. So with all that said and done, I've got a drink and I'm gonna get my, I need my pencil case actually. And I'm ready to go. And just a little side note, if you can hear the fan in the background, I'm sorry, but it is quite warm. All right, I'm just gonna start off with uh, this little reference image from Pinterest, just to kind of loosen up a little bit. What are some things that you do to relax or that make you happy? That's a lovely question, Positive Vibes 7002. So some of the stuff that I do to relax, kind of what you're seeing right now, I genuinely just enjoy sitting down with a nice beverage and uh, just drawing. It doesn't have to be anything pretty or, you know, anything special, but it, just sitting down and mindlessly drawing kind of helps me relax. It just kind of takes my mind off of things and since, like, if I just get my brain concentrated on doing something else, like drawing, um, it usually helps me relax and unwind. I have recently been very into crochet. I started getting into crochet during the quarantine and now it's kind of like my go-to when I want to do something but I don't really want to think at all or have to concentrate much. I, I like crocheting, it's quite a nice activity. I like to sit and do, you know, just activities that make, mean that my brain can shut off essentially. So sometimes that's playing a really nice relaxing game on my Switch um, or, you know, drawing or watching endless episodes of Catfish while I crochet. <laughs> it really depends on what, what the day calls for. Um, but yeah, recently it's been crocheting and uh, playing some games. What does your self-care routine look like outside of being an artist? I love all the, ver the very mental health positive questions we're getting. I, I always feel like when I'm taking care of my my like hair and my, my body, that's when I feel the most like taken care of. So I'll usually do something like a hair mask or a face mask. Um, I'm a big fan of baths, uh, if I do say so myself, so. I guess my self-care routine sometimes includes a bath and a nice book, so that's definitely on the uh, on the agenda if I'm if I'm having a self-care evening. Yeah, I, I love sitting in a bath with a nice uh, with some bubbles, reading a book. That's you can't go wrong with that, really. And then watching one of my uh, comfort shows, which is usually Q or JJK, Jujutsu Kaisen, or you know. Just stupid shows like that. We're watching something stupid on on YouTube. That's usually my self-care plan. Relaxing as much as possible. Also doing some stretches always helps. Like just get into the self-care zone. But yeah, anything that makes my, my, my body feel like more relaxed or feel make my body feel like it's being taken care of. Uh, doing my nails as well is a very nice self-care activity that I enjoy doing. What are your top three comfort shows? Oh my god, that's perfect. We were just talking about comfort shows uh, or characters. So I'll do both. I'll do characters and shows. So I'd say that my top three comfort shows are at the moment, these do change. They tend to change, but at the moment, <laughs> we've been really into catfish uh, in the house. We're like binging it for the second time, which is I know quite sad, but it's, it, it, it's how we're coping. <laughs> It's just a nice show to have on in the background, to be honest, and I don't know, there's something about Neve that makes me feel nice and relaxed, so I do enjoy Catfish, um, and Haikyuu is definitely a very big comfort show for me. I will, if I just put on a random episode of uh, Haikyuu, I immediately am like, okay, we're in zen mode right now. <laughs> I'd say Skate the Infinity is definitely another comfort show for me. I I know it's new, so it's it's like a new comfort show for me. But um, when I got the my first COVID vaccine the other week, I got a pretty bad fever afterwards. Like you know, just the usual 
stuff that some people uh, got after they that they got the vaccine, and I just kind of sat on the on the sofa, laid down on the sofa, and I was like, I need to watch the beach episode of Skate the Infinity to feel better, and I I, I did. I felt so much better. I was just like in in my comfort zone. Um, and it was lovely. I just love those boys a lot. Uh, Free is also a pretty comforting show to watch just because I've watched it so many times that at this point it's just kind of like a safe place. You know, like, it's kind of like with Haikyuu. I just really love putting it on, knowing exactly what episode is like is happening, what ex exactly what's happening and what's about to happen. And it just feels nice, you know? So yeah, I'd say those are my comfort shows. And I'd say my comfort characters, um, definitely Kenma and Kuro from Haikyuu. Those are like, just just the thought of those characters existing is just like, yep, everything's fine now. I can breathe again. It's just, I'm, I'm comforted. <laughs> Megumi from Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, I just love them so much and I, we just stand, you know? Finally, probably one from Skate the Infinity, I'd say. Probably just Longa existing. Longa and Cherry Blossom, I just love them both so much, so both of them existing. I just, they make me feel really nice and warm inside. <laughs> so that's my, my top three comfort shows and characters, I'd say at the moment. Adele Periard asks, hello, how do you break into a new medium? I got Posca's, but I don't know where to start. Ooh, that's a good question. I just posted a video about this a few weeks ago uh, about, you know, getting into a new medium and how to overcome the sort of fear of, of starting a new medium. But it's a very common thing of like not knowing where to start or how, like what to do for your first, you know, tester of with a new medium essentially. And it's a very real hurdle to get over which I think any of us will probably know the feeling of. Um, I'd say that the, what I usually do when I get into a new medium is I usually start with something that I already feel comfortable with. So I'll probably like take a drawing that I've already done maybe or a concept that I draw all the time and then try to implement the new medium in with that. Um, so baby steps essentially. So instead of like fully doing a new style of drawing or painting or whatever it is with that new medium. Just try and do what you already normally feel comfortable doing and doing that with that medium. Stay within your comfort zone for the first, you know, when, until you're like fully comfortable with the new medium and then start, you know, branching out and trying new things with it. And definitely just experiment as much as possible. Be messy with it. Don't, don't be afraid of like making awful drawings because it might happen, it probably will happen, so just losing that fear will already make it a lot less daunting. Losing the fear of making bad art and essentially will, will remove the pressure. But yeah, I did post like a whole video talking about getting into a new medium and stuff like that a few weeks ago, so if you want to hear me talk about that topic in a bit more length, um, maybe check it out. Maybe you'll find some more answers there. I'm trying to figure out these headphones and I'm using a reference picture and I'm still like, what is going on here? I don't know, just being messy with it because it it's just a sketch, so I'm just trying to... Tips for dealing with stress around not succeeding as a creative freelancer. I'd say any, you know, anxiety comes in many different forms, um, but definitely anxiety of feeling like you're not good enough is it's a it's a it's a very specifically frustrating one because it's something that's always kind of ever present in the back of your mind regardless of if you're having an especially anxious day or not it's always kind of there so obviously like it's something that's always going to be in the back of your mind I don't know if there's a, a, a cure for you know not feeling like like you're a failure um because everyone feels that every once in a while, like obviously it's just a part of, you know, self-doubt. Uh, but I definitely would say that just because you're not doing art full-time 
right now it doesn't make you any less of a creator or any less of an artist. There's so many people out there who do art and creative freelancing as well as another job to make ends meet and you know pay the bills. That's absolutely fine. There's a, there's no shame in uh, and there shouldn't be any shame in in having a, another job uh, just so it means that you can eat and pay rent, you know. Um, it doesn't make you any less of a creative freelancer and it doesn't make you any less of a successful creator, you know what I mean? Like the word successful is very subjective. You don't, you know, it's going to be different for different people who you ask. It depends on your point of view and what you consider to be successful. I think that just having the balls to be an artist and a creative f freelancer and and taking the leap into doing that, whether or not you're uh, you're making you know enough to survive from that alone or not, it really doesn't matter because you're still being a creative freelancer, and I think that that's more than enough to be honest. Just the fact that you're sticking with it is ballsy, and stuff will start coming from it. Uh, you just gotta kind of stick with it for now, and I think you're very successful for knowing what you want to do and and doing it so uh, i don't know if that answers your question but yeah just try to like remind yourself every once in a while that the the small percentage of you know successful creative freelancers that you see online are in fact just a small percentage of artists out there you don't have to compare yourself to them because there's a much larger group of people that are you know the struggle is real it really is so just don't compare yourself to the, the ones that made it or the ones that seem like they've got it together. You're enough doing what you're doing. What is a deep guilty pleasure that we wouldn't expect you to have? Hmm. I don't know. A deep guilty pleasure. I'm assuming we're... T we're okay. The first thing that I think of when I hear guilty pleasures is like TV shows. And at the moment, my guilty pleasure is very much catfish. It seriously slaps aggressively. Um, if you've ever watched it, you know that it's actually so entertaining as a show. It's absolutely ridiculous and it it's, it's it, I just, you know, it's just so funny and but sometimes it's also like so heart-wrenching and I just, <laughs> I don't know. It's a very interesting show. So that's been my guilty pleasure recently. I've also, what else have I been into that's like a guilty pleasure? I feel like a, a big guilty pleasure of mine in terms of like food? I really love mozzarella. I'm not a cheese person. Like, I don't, never really been into cheese, uh, which is kind of blasphemous being Portuguese, but I've never really been into cheese much. The only cheese that I have this really intense, intense need to take a bite out of is like mozzarella and mozzarella balls. Yeah, the amount of restraint I have to exercise to not just chomp away at a fresh mozzarella mozzarella ball is actually incredible and I don't think people realize how hard it is not to do that every time. <laughs> Catfish and mozzarella balls. Do with that what you will. <laughs> Hello, I have a friend who has anxiety. How can I support her? Please keep my name private. I saw this question and I really really enjoyed it because it's um it's an interesting different point of view uh, in terms of, you know, talking about mental health is how can people who aren't the, the sufferers of uh, a mental health condition, how can they support their friends who are suffering from something? And it's a very important thing to talk about, I think, that sometimes people are afraid of asking because they don't want to make it about them and, you know, and they don't want to like out their friends or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's a very sweet question. It's a very sweet thing to think about. Like, how can you be a better friend and um, or you know successfully try and help uh, someone without knowing what they're going through. I'd say again anxiety is very different for everyone um, so I obviously don't know your friend or what they're going through but I think the best thing with dealing with people who who are suffering from anxiety is to be patient because anxiety can make people either not want to communicate at all and you know kind of shut themselves out from the rest of the world i sometimes do that when i'm going through a, a particularly anxious period of time i will like throw my phone away and I'm like nope no phone no communicating with anyone either i don't want to talk to anyone at all like even family and stuff i just it, it it almost makes it worse talking to other people so uh be patient with them if they're not like 
up to talking about it or if they're not ready to talk about it and if they're not ready to to come out and like talk to you about what's been going on be patient with them and like try to wait until they're ready to talk or until they're ready to uh, to seek help you know from someone everyone has their different ways of dealing with anxiety definitely be open to listening to their troubles and like without judgment because it, it, it anxiety basically makes you think of really stupid things that like really stupid thoughts that once they you say them out loud you're like okay that's actually kind of dumb yeah listen to their their thoughts and their worries without judgment and sometimes people don't even want a solution to what they're like opening up to you about they just want to be heard so just try to be a good listener um, without actually trying to solve every little issue. Um, offer support, offer a distraction uh, if possible, like maybe doing something that you know your friend really enjoys that gets their mind off of things. Maybe recommend doing that together. I think that, that, that usually helps. I hope that that made sense. I hope that I answered your question. At the end of the day, just let them know that they're not alone and that you they can always come talk to you if they want. Okay, I should move on from this drawing. I've just kind of been faffing about with this warm-up for a bit. Cute girl number one. <laughs> Done. Yeah, I don't really know what to draw at the moment. I'm just kind of like, I haven't drawn in my sketchbook in a while. I will be real. I've been very sort of tired um, recently just because I've got a bunch of projects going on. So I haven't really had the uh, energy to sit down and just chill. I don't know. I think I'm going to just start just drawing someone else over here and see where it takes me. Okay, so the next question was, how do I get past a fear of my art getting messy? I give up when I don't have clean lines. Um, it's a great question. Uh, and kind of something that I already mentioned before, you have to get past the fear of um, making a mess. And there is always a, a quote that I always think about. And I, I, again, I completely for forget who it, it's from, but so correct me if you know in the comments, but it was, um, it's like, if you make a mess intentionally, um, you lose the fear of making a mess unintentionally or something like that, something like that. So it, you gotta kind of get yourself used to making a mess on purpose so that then you lose this sort of, um, preciousness with your art and you're more comfortable with making a mess on a, a regular basis, you know? So, um, yeah, just, I, it obviously is something that takes practice making, you know, making a mess and being comfortable with making a mess. I don't know, just doing that every once in a while is, I feel, quite important. It'll um, remove the sort of preciousness that people have with every single stroke or every single drawing. Iana.Seegers asks for my travel bucket list. So I've had a travel bucket list for a few years now and I've only managed to cross out one of those which was my last big trip when I was able to <laughs> to do trips and stuff and that was Florence in Italy it was one of my big like bucket list um travel bucket lists I'd love to go to Korea so Seoul you know Jeju Island just all the really beautiful places and eat all of the amazing seafood I just really want to have a, a nice eating holiday and seeing pretty things and uh, I definitely want to go to New York at some point. I know it's kind of a, a, a boring one but I've never been so I would like to at least experience it. I was actually meant to go to New York last year before COVID hit. Um, I even had like you know uh, tickets on the go and ready and then obviously we had to cancel everything. really want to go to New York, see all the museums, see all the cool stuff and you know experience it firsthand i definitely would love to go to japan again someplace i've never been and i i'd obviously want to go more than once because there's just so much to see and do in japan i got another question um do you use art in any way to cope with being so far away from the from family if so does it help i've never gotten this question before it's quite interesting and it's definitely something that I don't talk about that much on the channel, you know, being away from family. It's it's something that has gotten way easier with time. Obviously, when I was first out here in England on my own, it was very scary and daunting. And I definitely did have, you know, some very big struggles of adapting 
yeah, I definitely used my art as a means to like help with that because it, it was again just a way for me to deal with anxiety and depression in general and feeling like I'm really far from home is is a big stressor or a big uh, big part of my anxiety at the time then art will always help me in that department. Yeah, I did a lot of drawing uh, just to kind of shut off my brain a little bit. Yeah, nothing like in particular uh, to do with being far away from home. It was just sort of general anxiety help. What advice would you give uh, to a soon-to-be animation student? I'm pretty sure I've answered this question before. I think my advice usually is to stay as open-minded as possible because you never know what you're gonna like find that you love. Uh, it'll probably be something completely different to what you're expecting. Try to absorb as many different skills and different uh, softwares as you can even if it's just uh the basics or stuff like that uh try to learn those as well because you never know when one day you might need to know how to use the basics of that software for a job even if you think that you like don't like don't like it and if you think you're never going to use it and you're you don't enjoy that software keep an open mind try to learn it as much as possible then again there are a lot of jobs uh that you know are advertised as uh, being 2D animation work, but they require you to know how to use the 3D software so you can, you know, work the assets into it and whatever. Uh, but basically to say, even if you think you're never going to use the a software, so you don't want to learn it, try, give it a shot and uh, try to learn as much as you can. Yeah, try to enjoy it, just have fun. because. Yeah, it'll be a while until you're able to like, you know, do a lot of just a bunch of projects for yourself and have fun with experimenting because once you get into just doing client work, it's um it's a bit tough to to find time to experiment again and do and try out new things. So, that's what uni's for. While well, I try to figure out the anatomy of this, let's get into the next question. What are some ways to make money with your art? Love you and your art. Thank you so much, Nicole the Grump. There's lots of different ways that you can make money with your art. When I started started out as well, I, I did a lot of just commissions for like family, friends, like portraits, you know, just anyone who wanted like something from me be like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Um, paid, of course. They don't stand exposure. Because at the time I was uh, like portraiture was kind of what I was good at so I would you know around Christmas and birthdays and Valentine's Day I get quite a lot of uh, commissions and stuff and those were like a nice way to make money on the side but yeah if uh, if you're thinking of doing something a bit more like starting your own business or something like that um, there's so many different things you can you can make like there's um, clothing there's um, stickers there's you know uh, making little like accessories and stuff like that. There's so many things that you can do to jumpstart uh, a sort of a market base and having a client base that then people will come to for other things. But just think of like what would you want to buy? You know what I mean from other artists. That's always kind of how I <laughs> how I see it. Is like what would what do I want to what would I want to buy? What did you like the most in Portugal? Very sweet question. Obviously, you know, my family, you know, love you, mom. I know you're watching. <laughs> Besides, like, you know, my roots being there. The food, obviously, is absolutely amazing. There is nothing like Portuguese food. I also just love how beautiful it is. I'm from Porto, which is just one of the most beautiful cities, um, I think. No bias here, but... It's got the ocean, it's got the river, it's got a beautiful, like, preserved downtown area with beautiful old buildings. There's so much to see and so much to do. I do not like this schnoz I'm working with, so give me a sec so I can figure out this schnoz. 
because I have to do my boy Megumi some justice. I'm just trying to figure out his face a little. How are you these past few days? How have you been? I love your art and I love watching your videos. Thank you so much, matcha underscore P. I've been pretty good actually over the past few weeks slash months. It's been pretty good, which is nice to say. It feels good to say. I've uh, been feeling really stable. I've been just focusing on my mental health and you know doing work obviously as well normally this time of year is kind of a big trigger for me summer usually just really sets me off but so far i've been feeling really nice and maybe that's just because i did therapy this year and it's actually helped me a lot it's given me a lot of really good uh coping mechanisms and yeah just giving me a lot of tools to work with Thanks for asking. I hope you're all doing good. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves as well. Sav Paints and Draws asks, what skill do you want to learn next? I actually really want to try skateboarding. I don't know. I just kind of, I, I keep seeing people on TikTok, like really cool skateboarders on TikTok and it looks so cool. I don't know. Uh, I, I did get into uh, roller skating during quarantine, but I just feel like I really want to try skateboarding now. <laughs> so I've been actually looking into maybe purchasing a skateboard. So I'm um, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'll, uh, if I'd suit the aesthetic of being a skater girl, but it's only one way to find out really. I learned crocheting during quarantine. <sighs> And I feel like I've gotten pretty good at that, so I'm getting ready for my next uh, crafting adventure. I think for now, skateboarding is the main thing that I want to maybe get into. Oh my gosh, I love Megumi. Look how pretty he looks. I love him. He's got, like, beautiful eyelashes. I don't know who gave him the right, but he really do. I've got some space here at the bottom to fill up. <laughs> I have some really, a pr really pretty uh, reference image of some cool boots on my Pinterest that I kind of want to draw that may or may not be made for walking. Ooh, biggest artist pet peeve. Where to start? <laughs> Let's see, shall we? Uh, there's probably many. My biggest pet peeve at the moment is, I think a general pet peeve that I think a lot of artists will, will agree on uh, having is, you know, people being very pissy about paying for art and paying for work you know people either being wanting to pay you in exposure which is just always so cute to hear because i'm like oh yeah sure i'll just go pay rent with your exposure thank you so much but also i think people who like complain about a price that you've given them or something i'm like you don't have to like Fine, I'll just go, just say no then. Like, there's no need. I don't know, it's usually about people being rude in terms of uh, paying for, for your services as an artist or completely disregarding the fact that art is, you know, a job and it's some people's livelihood. Like, you wouldn't pay for your food at a restaurant in exposure or ask for an extra discount or, you know what I mean? People who don't see artists as an actual profession or people whose services they're paying for. I don't know, maybe I think when people give you like unsolicited advice uh, or criticism when you haven't asked for it, that can get quite annoying. Like obviously it depends on what the criticism is or how the person said it, obviously. Sometimes the way that um, it comes off is very like degrading, didn't ask for the roast, but here we are. It's just, it gets, it's really annoying and it kind of makes people seem a bit pretentious. Save yourself the embarrassment and keep it to yourself. These boots are very cute, aren't they? Again, if, if you are interested in like my reference images that I use, they're always on my Pinterest and the link for my Pinterest is always in the description of my videos. Someone asked, how was your trip to Portugal and what was your favorite part? And also what part, two part question, also your favorite song at the moment. <laughs> um, thank you for asking. At the time that I'm filming this, I'm assuming you're asking about my most recent trip, which was now in, uh, in May, which was very lovely. I hadn't seen my family in quite a while, so it was really lovely to go home and be with my family. I got to see my grandma as well, which insane. I hadn't seen my grandma since Christmas of 2019. It was definitely very nice to see her. It was 
a little emotional, you know. So we had like a nice socially distanced barbecue um, outside where we could uh, be close to my grandma without, you know, putting her at risk. Even though she has been vaccinated fully, we still wanted to keep everything as safe as possible. Yeah, seeing my grandma was probably my favorite part and seeing my, uh, my family, like my extended family, not my super immediate family, because I do... Uh, see them all the time when I go home and I also really uh, just didn't always enjoy being around my pets <laughs> They're awesome. So hold on. I'm just trying to figure out this uh, This lacing system am I doing this right? Yeah, and I think my favorite song at the moment. Let's see. Let's open up my Spotify. Let's see what's uh, I think my favorite song at the moment has been face to face by Ruel or butter by Devon culture but I have been really into just boys to men in general recently. Um, I've just been listening to a lot of boys to men. I've always been a fan, but recently, I don't know why, I've just been in my boys to men phase again. And uh, boys to men always slaps aggressively, so. All right, shall we, uh, shall we read out the last question? Do you feel the pandemic has quote, oversaturated the artist market, end quote, or, uh, quote, more equals merrier. I've never had this question before. It's a very interesting question. I don't think I've even thought about this. I haven't exactly noticed a super large increase in the artist market, personally, but if there has been an increase, great. I'm, I think I definitely fit into the the more the merrier category because more art, let's do it. <laughs> I see no issue with it. I guess I understand maybe the, the stress of the oversaturation of the art market means, you know, a lot more competition between small brands and small businesses and small artists. I, again, I'm pretty much in the more the merrier category there. I'm glad that more people during the pandemic got to, you know, tap into their creative outlets and, and managed to maybe start their own online businesses. Like, go, 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 you guys. Just more inspiration, I guess, for people everywhere. More people doing cool art, more people, you know, doing demonstrative, did I say that right? Protest uh, art and stuff like that, which was a big thing during quarantine because there was all these uh, protests and stuff happening and some people Their way of joining in on the action was creating art and pro Like protesting online. I think that in that in that sense I think it was a great addition and outlet for a lot of people who were suffering inside uh, who felt like they couldn't really help out in the cause and everything like that. I think it's been nice to see more people doing what they love. Just taking a bit of a step back, you know, after all this madness during quarantine and being like, you know what, I'm just gonna do art. But yeah, thanks for the very interesting question. I've never, never really thought about that. Also, I'm just kind of giving Megumi a little bit of a, a seat. I feel like he was hovering a little bit. <laughs> so I'm just uh, making sure he's actually sitting on something, you know? So yeah, this is uh, pretty much it for today's video. Um, if you stuck around till now, thank you so much. I'm gonna now get into these, this giveaway that I mentioned at the beginning. Yeah, I wanted to do a little giveaway on the channel because I haven't done a giveaway in quite a while. And I have some art materials that I have been sort of hoarding that I haven't really used uh, from just people sending me stuff as well as some stuff from the shop, from my shop. So here's this a show of what I'm giving away. So first and foremost, I'm giving away this uh, little drawing tablet. Ooh, from uh, Kenting. Again, I don't know how I acquired this, but it's just been sitting around in the house. So it's just a little uh, little tablet that you connect to your computer and do drawing on. So I'm giving that away as well as this big chunky set of Ohuhu Aqua Natural brush pens. Yeah, so like watercolor pens, basically, brush pens. I've never used these, but I've heard they're really good. On top of that, I'm also gonna be giving away this uh, Nova dual tip brush pen pack. Again, unopened. I've already got a bunch of dual tip brush pens, so I don't really need these. And finally, in terms of um, art supplies, I'm giving away this 48 pack of Arteza coloring pencils. Again, I've only tried like a few of them, but they're pretty much unused as well. As well as a little tiny set of Ohuhu markers, a, a random assortment of colors. So in terms of art supplies, that's what's gonna be present in the giveaway. And then finally, I'm also giving away a copy of my Scribbles 2021 book and a little charm from my shop, as well as just a random assortment of stickers uh, that I'll just pick out 
All of these items um, I'm just gonna send off to a random winner. It is worldwide open to everyone, so you don't have to be living anywhere specific to enter. So yeah, basically the rules for the giveaway are just make sure you're subscribed to my channel, make sure you're following my Instagram, and comment down there in the video, I know something nice about your day today. <laughs> Just anything. It's a completely random giveaway. Good luck to everyone who enters. And on that note, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. This is what we've done today. We've done some kind of accidental random Megumis and uh, just some cute little sketches here and there. If you were drawing along with me, I uh, hope you enjoyed. I hope uh, you enjoyed just having a little sketch along with me. And thank you for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye bye!